So the boys and I are making homemade wrapping paper. We're using some paper towel rolls and some rolls that came from my Cricut vinyl that I've saved. And then Chase is using a smaller tube that we found. I honestly can't remember where that came from, but I've had it since October sometime, knowing that this would be the cutest activity ever. So the Chase is making mini snowmen. Dayton's making larger ones and they're gonna add all the details and since they went and got some gifts for each other for Christmas they're gonna wrap their gifts with their homemade wrapping paper so they just have a little palette of some colors they thought they would like we're gonna pretend like it's super Christmassy out today and make our wrapping paper so this brown paper came from the side of a brown paper bag and they both have a sheet and then we have some just plain unprinted newsprint and then some other pieces of like a brown recycled paper that came out of other packaging that we just save throughout the year and then we know we have something to use for projects like this. Sometimes we don't know what we're gonna use them for when we kind of gather them, but we always find something to make sure that we use as much as we possibly can, especially when you get tons of packaging and things throughout the year. YouTube family, I cannot even tell you how excited I am that I was able to get this wall done. I'm even more excited to know that we're gonna be doing the ceiling soon. The ceiling is gonna go just about an inch or so above the cabinet height here. So that's why you see that the pattern doesn't repeat. I won't need any green stems in between because it's going to be enough of the pattern once you only see like this much. And you can see that it's totally done and I absolutely love it. And every single time I come into this space now, I just feel like this is exactly the vibe that it needed. I keep going and running my hand over the wall. I just love the texture and they're so detailed. I just, oh, I love it. It's so dreamy to me. And because me and my boys always grow sunflowers together, I think this was just like the best thing and works perfectly for my homesteading pantry. I think it looks so cute in the laundry room side or on the pantry side. I'm loving it and I'm so happy that I did it. Okay, so we have had, I don't even know how many, hundreds of questions about how has the spray paint on my washer and dryer held up over the past several months. As you know, a couple months back, I think about six months ago, I decided that I did not like all of the chrome that was on our washer and dryer. When we bought our washer and dryer, we also bought a fridge, stove, dishwasher, and freezer that were all going to be this dark, I'm gonna call it like a space gray, I think is what they actually listed it as when we bought it. Remember we ordered our original kitchen for this house, which was actually going to be in this room. So I'm also happy that everything happens for a reason and that that kitchen did not arrive because this is the best walk-in laundry room pantry ever. And it was such a good decision and such a good idea that Philip came up with to put our kitchen in the big room over there and then have this as a walk-in space. So the first appliances that arrived were the washer and dryer. And then when all of the other appliances was, were delayed, in addition to the cabinets that were going to go in this room that were from a cabinet company through um, an agency that we were getting our kitchen from, when all of that was delayed, I didn't have a fridge. I didn't have a stove. I don't really use a dishwasher, but we ordered one anyways. It was gonna be in our dream kitchen. And I was like, what are we gonna do? So after months and months went by, we didn't have the matching appliances to this or any appliances whatsoever. We used a mini bar fridge, a toaster oven, a toaster, a crock pot, a microwave. We used all of the small kitchen appliances that you could possibly think of to make do until our appliances arrived. And when they ended up you know, not giving us an estimated time of arrival for our kitchen and the appliances also didn't have an estimated time of arrival, I decided to cancel those appliances and just go to my closest store and get myself a fridge and a stove so that we could, you know, stop using a little tiny mini fridge for a family of four. I just couldn't after 18 months even think that I was going to go any longer not having real appliances, like real size appliances. And because I also was thinking that ultimately now, in hindsight, I wish I would have just gotten white appliances for everything. These had already came. So now that they're here, I already have them. The fridge and dishwasher and stove never arrived. So we just bought a secondhand fridge, a very inexpensive stove for the kitchen for now in the other room. And we didn't even get a dishwasher because I never use it. But these are blue. And so I thought blue and chrome, the chrome is so not me. You know that I am a gold or a brass, antique brass girl. And so I think I'm gonna go with that kind of forever. It's kind of my thing. 
And I just took the plunge to make these with the spray paint. I used the Rust-Oleum Metallic Gold, as you saw in the video. And now that it's been six months, I wanted to answer the question that keeps getting asked about, you know, how has it held up? I have used these almost every single day, both pieces, since we did them. I touch them all the time. Boys touch them. Philip touches them. And we so far don't have any of the paint that's gone on the washer or dryer. The paint is still on perfectly. The only spot that there is a little bit of wear and tear is right here on the front. And this little spot right here is just a tiny little silver line that has worn off a little bit. The reason that that happened was because I dripped, putting my dishwasher detergent into here, some Tide laundry soap dripped on the front of this and I wiped it with a sponge. I don't know if I should have let it dry first and then wiped it off or not, but the detergent took a little bit of the gold off of there, which for me is just a quick piece of tape and a quick little spray over of that spot. But nowhere where we grab, nothing from any of the basic spots have come off at all except for where this laundry soap dripped. So if you're looking at doing this project, I would highly recommend it. Just keep in mind what happened to me with my laundry soap. Maybe be a little more careful when you're pouring your soap. I was distracted, kind of got pouring and got some on the front of my machine. So my own fault for that. I also didn't clear coat my spray paint. So you might want to use a clear satin poly spray over top of your spray paint. Maybe that would have solved my problem of not worrying about the laundry soap going over top. But I just thought I would answer your questions about that. So I'm excited that I'm now in the pantry space. We are going to be working on the bathroom this week. Everything is here for the bathroom. But while I've been playing around in this pantry and doing the sunflowers over the past week or so, we have all still not been feeling that great. Boys are feeling better. Philip and I are still lingering a little bit. So today I thought it would be fun to just finish up something that I think I need to add to the sunflower wall. And I started putting some things in my pantry jars and I'm just starting to kind of acquire some of the storage options that will be in this room and kind of putting some things away. And now I want to do some labels and things for that. But I think one of the things that I'm going to put to add to this wall is going to be really, really adorable. And I'm going to go look around the house in my scrap pieces in the art room, see if I can find a thin piece of wood because I need to make something that I can add to this wall. So I've started to put some of our baking goods in some of these jars. Philip's mom picked me up these amazing jars at Ikea. We have some dog treats in this one. Icing sugar, brown sugar, white sugar, we have flour. I also was able to get these really cute ceramic berry dishes. I thought those were so adorable. And then I picked up these mason jars that have the like metal, I guess a uh, latch lid and they have a rubber seal in them. I think these are really cute and I did pick up some goat milk laundry soap so I think I'm going to fill one of these with my laundry soap put a cute scoop in it and maybe make a little tag that just says what it is but I don't want to do just a tag that says goat milk soap. I think I want to make a little scroll saw goat and just have it hanging on the side here. So I think I'm going to do that today too and I'm just kind of gathering some of our things. So I just used my red Pyrex bowl in the kitchen to make something with the boys, but I have my Pyrex dishes here. I'm gathering a few things. There's our apple core peeler that I've been using since the boys were babies to make their homemade apple sauces and things like that. KitchenAid mixer, which I love matches my other appliances that are in this room, but we're getting there. But now we need some cupboard doors and other shelves and stuff in here to be able to get some of the stuff away. And of course I need a lot more jars than just these ones.
Okay, so I painted my honeybee. I did get a little brown dot there just to the bottom of his tail. My hand touched the end of the tail I was painting, but I think he's so cute. So now I'm gonna head to my scroll saw and then cut this little guy out and then I'll be able to put him on the wall. But I think before I head to the scroll saw, I'm going to use the top of my board here to be able to make my goat for my goat milk soap. So I made myself this cute little goat to put on my goat milk soap container that I'm going to do. And then here is my honeybee. I just looked at a picture of a honeybee and a goat online and then just freehand painted them. I didn't really rough sketch it really much with a pencil because there really was no point because then I was painting over the lines anyways. I think they look really cute. I'm gonna go put them in the pantry. Okay, and it's time to put my honeybee on the wall. How cute is that? So cute. I have a honeybee on one of my sunflowers and I just put a little piece of tape that can go remove on and off like a sticky tack kind of tape that the boys can move the bee around. They can move it wherever they want. I think that's so cute. And since we are now going to be beekeepers come spring, I thought that that would be an adorable addition to putting the honeybee on one of my sunflowers. So cute. It's literally so adorable. I love it. Okay, I absolutely love the honeybee. And we are so excited to get bees in the spring and add them to our homestead. So I think this was such a cute addition to my wall of sunflowers. I think it's so cheery and I know that the boys are gonna move that bee all over the place. <laughs> I'll be constantly looking for the bee. Dayton loves interactive things on the fridge all the time or if we put little message boards where you move the tiles and stuff. So I think this is just another thing that he's going to really enjoy. So I'm gonna go now and take one of the glass jars that I've been using and put my goat milk soap into it. I know that switching from our chemical filled laundry soaps and switching to more eco products is one of our goals for this new year. So at our craft show that we went to a couple of weeks ago, the boys and I picked up some goat milk laundry soap. So I wanted to put it in a glass jar, get it out of the plastic container that it came in and then be able to make a really cute label for my jar. They didn't want it to just say goat milk soap and so I decided to make a cute little hand painted goat that scroll saw cut out that I can hang as a tag on my jar. So let's get that put together. Okay, so I picked up these mason jars that have the clamp lids and they have a sealable silicone ring around them, which I like as well to keep things fresh. I picked these up at Walmart for just $4 a jar. They only had three of them, so that's all I could get. But I thought they would be really, really cute for me to put my goat milk laundry soap in. So of course I have a gold scoop. I created my adorable goat and I just did a little hole in him so I could put some thin jute through, but he is so unbelievably adorable. And I'm going to take my gold milk laundry soap and put it out of this package that it came into. And I'm going to put it in my jar. I just thought that once I get this actually open and start using it this week, that I'm gonna have a hard time resealing it and it's gonna make a mess. So I thought this was a better way to do it. It does have like a little bit of a resealable kind of baggie to it, but I just don't think that I'll be able to get it done once I open it up a few times. And this is the first time we're gonna be using goat milk laundry soap. So we're gonna let you know how we like it. But while we're switching our products, we're just finishing up our last of our containers of Tide and we're gonna go with something a little more eco. So I'm gonna peep my scoop. It can just stay in here. I'm gonna close it up. And then I'm going to take my jute and just tie my cute little goat around my container. I'm gonna keep this in my little home sitting binder that I have because it tells me what ingredients are in here. I don't really need it with the laundry soap since only really the four of us are gonna be using it, so that doesn't really matter too much. I think that this is such a cuter idea than just writing the words goat milk soap on it. And now it can stay here in our laundry room side. We can use that instead of our chemical filled laundry soap. Okay, something else that I wanted to mention about the pantry that I think some of you might be relieved about and some of you might be disappointed about. I'm not really sure which way it's gonna go. But we've decided to not have the freezer here in the pantry. Now that the freezer has been in here for quite a few months, we'll be working on this space. We've decided to make this homesteading pantry part of a bigger project or the bigger picture of what we want to do here on the homestead. So as you know, we're going to be doing 
growing our own food, you know, raising up our own chickens and turkeys and have a lot of different things here on the homestead to be able to be more sustainable and provide for our own family right here on our acreage. And so this is going to be a great spot for us to do our normal basic functions in a homestead pantry where we have a lot of our materials. You know I have the baking pantry where I keep all of my supplies as well that was already built into the wall here. I wanted to have the deep freezer in this room, but I wanted to hide it. So I was building a cabinet built in. And since we're still in the process of building in here, now is the time to make that change. And Philip and I have decided that we're going to need even more space than just in this room to store everything that we're going to grow and provide for our family. So we are going to relocate the freezer down into the basement. I know you have seen my basement. You've seen two septic explosions happen in my basement. We think we've rectified the plumbing issue down there. And that room has now been like clean from the mess that happened, but it's still a dungeony, gross, I'm gonna say like stone and wood and dirt basement. And so I'm gonna challenge myself, not only to get that freezer downstairs, because Philip and I are going to have to really struggle with the angles of the staircase and everything to get this down into the basement, I'm going to turn my basement into something. Okay, I'm going to take you down into the basement and show you. And you can tell me if you think that this is an outlandish idea or if this is a winner idea. Okay, I can't believe I'm taking you down into my basement again. We're going to go down and I'm going to show you what my idea is. Turn the light on for us. Okay, so down in the basement, we have our hot water heater. We have all of the underfloor beams. There is electricity down here and we have like a concrete floor, which is just kind of the dirt and stone concrete that would be on an old cold cellar. We have a hot water heater down here that blew when we first moved in. So that needs to get taken to the dump so that that can be taken out of here. And we do have some plumbing that's going to be moved into a different spot here. You'll also notice that there is a huge box down here now. And there is, and you'll also notice that there's a cabinet down here. This cabinet was sent to me by Costway. And this cabinet is a cedar. It's really beautiful. I love the sort of shutter look front on it. So we have one already put together and one is in this box here that you just saw. And what you do is you remove this cute peg here and inside there's storage, which I think is amazing. So this cabinet gave me the idea that why can't I have these cabinets down here? I'm going to do a clear poly covering all of the walls to ba vapor barrier the basement, remove the hot water tank, and be able to make this entire basement into a root cellar. Because I see a lot of potential. This whole side here, if I was going to put two cabinets, be able to vapor barrier and even do like a shiplap wall down here, I think that would be adorable. And then be able to do shelving all the way across here in front that I can put all of my canning jars, have some you know wood crates and baskets and things to be able to keep a lot of our rations for the year down here. And I think I could even do something with the floor so that this is actually looks like a nice aesthetic pantry rather than just this dungeony basement. So not only would I make use of a very unusable basement that we absolutely have no other use for, but I have a really nice, cool, dry place that I can make a root cellar. So let me know what you think of that idea. I think that if I use those two cabinets and I build myself some DIY storage and shelving, I can put all of my canning and preserves down there and also have baskets of things like, you know, squash and pumpkins and apples and potatoes and carrots and all kinds of things that can be in loose bins. I can have them downstairs. I just need to put in the work to make it a beautiful space. But I think that I can make that space pretty awesome. I have so many plans for things to grow here on the homestead and I'm gonna need a place to put it all. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. We were working on a few holiday things to prepare because Christmas is just a few days away. And when you have children at home at Christmas, all the small little things you do make the day so much more magical. So we're working on a bunch of eco projects this week, just working on making things like our homemade wallpaper, homemade cards and different things that we've been making each other for Christmas that we'll be gifting later on in the week. 
And since we aren't feeling 100%, I thought that today I would tinker with a few small projects to finish some personal touches I wanted to add to this room. I love being able to use my creativity and make things look really whimsical and homey. I just add some of those small details that I think make this space so much more unique like adding our little honeybee because our family is getting bees in the spring, or even just making a little goat for our goat milk laundry soap. I think that's a really cute touch rather than having a traditional label. I think I'm gonna spend some time later on today labeling some of my jars for some of the baking things. I picked up some little jars for our spices and I think this week the boys and I are gonna make some of our own spice concoctions for things like tacos and fajitas and stuff and jar them all up. So we'll share some of those things with you later this week. But I wanna get some labels on some of these things before I have to start taste testing what I put in my jars and can't remember what I put in them. But I'm gonna be on the lookout for more jars to store things for our pantry. And don't forget to leave a comment down below on if you think that I should make the basement into a root cellar or cold room to be able to store our homesteading goodies and let me know what you think of today's creative projects. I love you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on tomorrow's episode.